All right, this is One Last Midnight. Welcome back to another episode of Astroneer. So, uh, you want to start making mobile bases. You, you want to cruise around in your vehicles and um, maybe have some base pieces with you to help you, I don't know, build up another base or just be free. I don't know. You choose. It's your, it's, man, it's your game. <laughs> anyway, here's my video on mobile bases. I hope you enjoy it. All right, so you want to have a mobile base. Well, mobile bases are highly situational, mainly because I don't know what you're trying to accomplish. You, you need to have some sort of goal. Is your goal to have every single building piece on your mobile base so that you can get to the next location and set up quickly? Or is your goal to turn around and produce an enormous amount of resources? Or maybe your goal is to be a mobile scrapping base kind of station. I, I don't know. The choice is really up to you and what you're trying to accomplish. Maybe you just want to be away from your base and never have to worry about going back. And so what kind of combinations would be best to set up? Here's some issues with the mobile bases. Number one, you have space issues. Base pieces take up the two, two of the four slots on your large vehicle. First, we need to talk about how to get a mobile base set up. You're going to need some sort of vehicle configuration, whether it's medium sized vehicles or large vehicles. I like the large vehicles and this you need to remember is more of a late game kind of build because you're not necessarily going to have the bites invested into the large vehicle early on. Maybe you do. That's that's a completely up to you as well. How you invest your bites, but you're going to have to have all of these pieces unlocked. So, I mean, this is a representation of an enormous amount of bytes. And that's why I say it's more of a late game build. You're also going to need to have some sort of power solution. My power solution is two RTGs. Now, if you're not at the RTG stage, you don't have the bytes for that stage. It's going to be some sort of solar or possibly wind power or even possibly a combination of having some batteries. It really depends on what you have available to you. shoot. You might even just have you know, the little solar and wind available to you at this point in time. You have to remember though that these large vehicles take an enormous amount of power. And not only that, if you have the base pieces on, they also take power. So make sure that your power situation is taken care of before you start running one of these mobile bases. It's not impossible to run these mobile bases with generators, but it would be pretty tricky. So there's some things to think about when you're setting up your configuration for the mobile base. One is where am I going to sit? And while you think that this is probably not important, it actually is. Let's wait for it to get dark really fast and you'll see what I'm talking about. So it's now dark and you can see that my Astroneer has this kind of spotlight that moves with the cursor in front of you. But what happens when you get in the vehicle? If your seat is facing forward, your spotlight becomes a fixed spotlight, almost like the headlights of a vehicle. You can see it out in front of me. It's fixed. It'll move with the vehicle as I'm moving. This is great because you have some forward light. But if you're trying to build a mobile base where your first vehicle has two base pieces on it, your choices for where your seat is located is a little bit limited. Actually, you're going to have a, a situation where your seat is probably going to be in the front. If it's not in the front, then uh, maybe a base piece will be in the front. But again, you have to pay attention that driving with a huge piece in the front like this is actually going to restrict your vehicle movement. So chances are you're not going to do that. The best option would be to have a rover seat in the front. Remember what I said about the light, that the light is directional. And when you get into the seat, if your seat is facing up, your light is going to be facing up and you actually don't even see the light. That's because it's going directly into the sky and the front of my vehicle is really dark. It's almost impossible to drive in cave systems with a dark vehicle. So you're going to need to have some sort of light. Now you can change the angle of your seat to help you. Let's say we change this seat to have it facing downward. Well, if you're facing downward, your point of light is going to be very small. It's going to be very tiny in front of you. It's not really help. It's like holding the flashlight almost to the surface of a desk or to a wall or something. And with putting it off to the side while you get some side lighting, it's not really that effective for driving forward. So how do you solve this problem? 
Probably the best scenario is to have a work light attached to your Astroneer, whether it's on the top or on your tool or something along those lines. And when you get into the seat, you now have at least this point of light around your vehicle. It doesn't go as far as the spotlight would go. It's not like a beam of light that goes out on your, like on your helmet, you could see it going off to the side over here. It's more of like a radius effect. And while it doesn't give you a lot of light, it does give you some light. So this is some of the challenges you need to think about when you're configuring your mobile base, especially if you're gonna be doing some nighttime driving. But again, your mobile base is highly situational. What am I trying to accomplish? I like to set my mobile base up something like this. I like to have the crane and the soil centrifuge on the first rover, mainly because I, I like to get out of the rover seat and just jump into the crane and start using the crane. I also like to have an additional storage on the front because when the soil centrifuge is complete, that storage will get filled up with whatever comes off of the soil centrifuge. Now, why is this important? Well, the crane will actually fill up the soil centrifuge. Let me just give you a quick example of that. I'm going to disconnect this and let's go into the caves. So you'll notice that my soil centrifuge is almost at one bar. Let's go ahead and jump into the crane and do a little digging. As I move my crane head around and start drilling into the soil, you'll see that my soil centrifuge has started filling up. You can quickly gather a bunch of soil this way. This is absolutely a very effective way to fill up your soil centrifuge. When your soil centrifuge is, is full, you'll notice that the head on the drill starts shooting out fire. Very similar to the drill head on the Astroneer will give off sparks. That's when you know it's time to stop. And if you happen to have that extra storage, you can just quickly start processing whatever item you want to. Remember, this is going to take power, so you have to have a really good power source. I recommend the RTG if you're at that stage because it's enough power to run the soil centrifuge at full power. When it's complete, the items will come off and drop on to the medium storage. Or additional places, if you have a couple additional places on your vehicle, it'll fill those up as well. So that is a very effective way to gather soil and generate resources off of the crane soil centrifuge combination in your mobile drill. Now, what else would I have on there? Personally, for me, if I want to be the most efficient, I would actually remove this smelter and the chemistry lab for the second position and place in a large shredder and a trade platform. The large shredder and trade platform will allow me to take some of those resources that I just gathered and build items to scrap. I can then run the scrapper and generate scrap off of these items. You then turn around and take the scrap and start populating your trade platform so that you can trade for those resources that might not necessarily be found on the particular planet that you're on. So what would I have next? Actually, for me personally, I would just have the smelter next. So what would I have next? I personally like a lot of storage next. I would have some sort of configuration where my power is actually on a large storage, freeing up that back slot piece so that I can have an additional storage sitting on the back. This will allow me to hold a magnificent amount of resources. I'd replace that storage on the front with a medium printer. I like to carry a small printer in my backpack and a small platform A. That way I can use the medium printer to start building other base pieces as I needed. I would also give up a little bit of space just so that I can have some lights to help light up my vehicle. With this mobile base configuration, I can quickly gather resources with the crane and the soil centrifuge, convert it into scrap, traded for other resources that aren't available on this planet, smelt it down and remake my base anywhere on any planet. All right, that was my video on mobile bases. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you haven't already, hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber, become a subscriber. We've got a great community here. And uh, if you want to follow me on all of my social media, the links are in the description below. Hope to see you guys soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. 
Thanks for watching. Please remember to hit that like button if you like the video and subscribe to our channel so you can stay on top of all of our latest video releases. I release content almost every day. We'll see you guys soon. Bye.